All right, what's up, guys? I'm joined with my bro, Nick. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about um, Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, and Hannibal, and we're going to pretty much be talking about what I think the deciding factors are for their victory. This is the first podcast I've ever done. You guys can follow me on Instagram at underscore alexander.zinc, underscore again. Uh, <laughs> follow me on Twitter at Zinc Alexander. Fancy, I know. So we're going to be talking about the deciding factors that um, all three of these men had, which I believe made them the great military commanders that they are. The deciding factors are going to be love for the game, speed, shock, and agility, and then initiative. Um, I'm pulling some of this from the book Masters of Command, written by Barry Strass. Nick, you want to say something to the people out there? I'm Nick. You can follow me on Instagram at Nicholas Devere, N I C H O L A S. So. Starting off, Alexander the Great, he definitely um, displayed a love for the game. He genuinely loved warfare, um, and even though he is known to have had a few different wives, I definitely think that um, his love belonged to conquest and war, and it surpassed pretty much farther than any other person in their army, wouldn't you say? For sure. I mean, Alexander the Great was pretty oh, much like the greatest, <laughs> the greatest military leader. Totally. In the world, like, yeah. of all time. And I think when yeah. his men kind of, they got tired, they wanted to go home, they wanted to see their wives, Alexander literally could not understand how yeah. they yeah. didn't want to stop. He was relentless, and but his men were like, we've been on this trek for Asia and Persia for nine years, I want to go home, yeah. and he was he like... He could have been loved by the people. Like, oh, everyone yeah. was saying, like, he could have been loved for the rest of his life, but he wanted conquest so bad that he had literally a divided nation towards the end of his life because... He wanted to keep going further and further, but people just wanted to go home at that point. Yeah. Leaving home for 12 years is tough. But yeah. To have someone so, like, mind-driven is kind of crazy. Yeah. I think Conquest was his home. Yeah, like, he never... And he said in the book, too, that I never really had a home. Mm -hmm. He said that... Um, yeah. Pretty much there was no home for him. He never felt like he was... He truly belonged somewhere. Mm -hmm. He kept looking for somewhere further that he could find home. Mm -hmm. So that was one of his goals, to find a home. And I think that's also what set him apart from his men. It's what made him a great leader. Um, but it is also... It also kind of worked to his detriment at times because he. I, I really don't think he could put himself in the feet of some of his men who wanted to go home. I don't think he could. He tried to understand it. Mm -hmm. He said, like... He was talking to all his military commanders saying that he would set the, send them home if they really want to. Mm -hmm. but the thing is, they all loved Alexander so much and they wanted to be in his debt, but they wanted him to go home as well. True, true. They wanted his reign of conquest just to, you know, come to a halt for a bit. Mm -hmm. But he, he couldn't, he couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. He couldn't handle not finding more of the world because he knew there was more every time he kept discovering. He kept yeah. seeing more and more. And sure. I think even nowadays, men strive to find more and more things. Oh, yeah, totally. And everyone... You can see it in pop culture and like yeah. rap, like, oh, I'm always hungry, I'm always grinding. Like, yeah, it's exactly. kind of man's spirit to be relentless and to, to search for new lands. Obviously, no one has done what Alexander has done, no, um, conquered no that much land. No one's ever been able to like, discover no. half the world all he, by yourself. He took it to a whole, a whole different level. Well, that's why his name is The Great. No one the ever greatest. been called The Great. <laughs> the Great Man. All right, so obviously love for the game. He had a love for warfare, and that's what made him excel as a leader. Number two. Speed, shock, and agility. Hannibal. Hannibal is the superior general in Carthage. He used shock and speed to his advantage, but he lacked the infrastructure and sustainment needed to carry out his war against Rome. He was good at requiring victories, but not great at using them to his advantage. He could have attempted to sack Rome, but he just chose not to. Exactly. So, pretty much, when Hannibal marched his army over the mountains, over the Alps, Rome was like, what are you doing? All of a sudden, they had Carthage kind of in their backyard. And up until then, they didn't really see Carthage necessarily as a threat. More, They kind of just pushed Carthage around. And Carthage was kind of tired of them. Um, so Hannibal definitely used his agility to get his troops over the mountains, which surprised um, and underlying shock, shocked the Roman Empire. He won a few good victories. Um, but... He could have he could have sacked Rome. He had the opportunity to sack Rome. Um, the the road to Rome um, is about a, probably a four week march for his army. Um, sieging the walls of Rome probably would have taken a few months. Um, but the reason why he didn't was because it, w it was once said that he was very good at gaining victories, but he wasn't really good at using those victories. So in another way, he would win a major battle, and then he would kind of just stop. Um, 
but that was bad for for Carthage because they didn't have the supplies and the constant flow of money and reinforcements because Carthage is not as rich as Roman, whereas Rome had multiple naval depots. Multiple, they had the whole city of Rome, which is treasury was immense. They kind of had endless funds, so Rome could afford taking breaks, weeks, months off of the trek um, of defending their homeland, whereas Carthage couldn't. So at the very beginning, Carthage. Um, recognize that hey if we're gonna win if we're gonna beat Rome we got to do it fast because we don't have enough money we don't have enough people we don't have enough resources to uh, fight a long battle and I think at the very beginning Hannibal understood that and he acted with that swiftness and it worked it scared Rome um, but uh, when he had the when Hannibal was given the opportunity to possibly sack Rome he decided not to and I think that was really what led him to not being able to defeat the Romans. Um, he ran out of resources. He kind of ran out of well, he ran out of momentum, um, which is pretty much the the unfortunate part for Hannibal. But that doesn't mean he's a horrible leader. He's probably one of the greatest military minds out there of all times. Um, so speed, shock, and agility, um, very was very successful for Hannibal in the beginning. Um, unfortunately, he just wasn't able to keep that up. All right. He lacked, I think, one thing, which was Alexander. If you read his book, you would understand. He said that you can't lack hesitation. I think he hesitated. Mm -hmm. That's true. Sacking Rome. He did. He didn't hesitate and said, we're going to go mm -hmm. all out against Rome. Totally. He may have had a chance, but he never knew. No. He, you don't. Exactly. You can't hesitate. You can't hesitate. Um, I think, well, sometimes in war, there's times when you have to uh, kind of take a step back mm -hmm. and either, either let the enemy come to you or let time play out but there is a difference between being patient and hesitating um alexander never hesitated however he was patient hannibal did hesitate you're right um and that that didn't work out well for him he should have seized he should have seized the day the moment <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't i guess go forward to what he was planning on doing exactly he was i think he was scared in some aspects because mm -hmm. who wouldn't be scared of conquering rome which was the strongest yeah. empire in the world at that time yep and if you can't, I guess, I guess it applies to real life right now. Like, if you hesitate sometimes, you never get the chance of yeah. experiencing yeah. what could happen. And Hannibal could have been going down as Hannibal the Great, but... Yeah, unfortunately. Know. He did go down as probably one of the greatest generals of all times. Unfortunately, technically, he was a losing general. Yeah, but you're right. That was a good point. Never hesitate. Um, and I think, I think it was recorded. Well, I guess historians kind of disagree on this, but later in his life... Um, he talked about how he regretted not taking the opportunity to sack Rome when he had when it was given to him. Um, so he probably realized down the road, shoot, should have should have taken the initiative. Exactly. All right. Well, actually, perfect segue into number three, which is a deciding factor of initiative. Um, using Caesar as this example, so Caesar and Pompey were obviously very uh, egotistical people. Both of them wanted almost absolute power. Pompey probably would have shared some of it with the the, the Senate. Um, but I think setting out from the beginning, Julius Caesar wanted absolute power. He knew that he being consul wasn't enough. He wanted to be a dictator. But regardless of that, both men were super egotistical. Um, and both of their armies more or less loved them as their leader. I would say Caesar's army was a little bit more loyal to him um, because they were together when, when they were conquering Gaul. Um, whereas Pompey's troops might have been more loyal to him because of money. But either way... Both Pompey and Caesar told their men that they were fighting for Rome, so there was that kind of patriotic idea. However, when it came to probably the, the biggest battle at um, Pharsalus, uh, Caesar took the initiative. Um, his judgment was accurate and precise when um, Pompey's was lacking. Pompey was a little bit slow um, and pretty much was um, outsmarted by Caesar. And I think that, that, I mean, that was the battle that um, kind of had Pompey and his men flee. Caesar took the initiative. He saw a weakness in his enemy, which is a good leader, exploits that weakness. Pompey was very smart in the same sense. He also exploited Caesar's weaknesses, yeah. but not to the extreme of Caesar. Caesar was very fast about it. It was very, uh, I guess Pompey was also considered one of the greatest generals in Rome. But Yeah, he was. Throughout history, they keep saying you always hear Caesar. Mm -hmm. Caesar just had a different presence to himself. Yeah. Like Pompey, he, he understood how the battlegrounds worked, but I think... He wanted, he didn't really enjoy battle compared to Caesar, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like Caesar, he took everything that was given to him mm -hmm. and he just took the initiative at that moment. Mm -hmm. Well, Pompey probably would have 
took a step back and thought about it at first yeah. instead of making an initiative right then and there saying this is what has to be done totally I'll be able to think about it since totally. you were taking the initiative yeah and I think Caesar well Caesar wanted absolute power whereas Pompey because I, I think that's what really drove Caesar he wanted to be loved by all exactly Pompey wanted to be known for his greatness while mm-hmm. Caesar just wanted he wanted everything to himself yeah yeah so I think that is also kind of the driving factor that maybe had Caesar work a little bit harder than Pompey all right well anyway guys hopefully this was somewhat interesting to you um i'm gonna have other people on this we're gonna be talking about books about leadership uh and some questions that i get asked a lot Uh, however this was just a short kind of um uh short little talk about a comparison between alexander the great and hannibal and of course julius caesar and the deciding factors of what made them great the love of the game love of warfare for alexander the great speed shock and agility and how hannibal used that to his benefit and of course initiative how caesar owned the battlefield at pharsalis once again guys you can follow me on instagram at underscore alex dot zinc underscore again or at zinc alexander on twitter uh nick closing statements uh you can follow me at nicholas debris on instagram again (laughs) please drop a follow and uh be a man as you go into this day chase glory strive for conquest amen Never hesitate. All right, guys, have a great day.